Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and the sun is setting, my friends, not only on this absolutely beautiful, gorgeous scenery, but also on 2021, my friends. We only got a couple of weeks left, and it's been a rough year. I'm gonna reflect on it today with you guys, and as per usual, I do wanna hear what you think as well. Now, needless to say, it's been a tough year. This has been a full pandemic year, but I'm gonna be focusing a bit more on Warframe, since that's what we're all here for. So let's go back to the start of 2021. You guys remember what we got back then? Huh? Anybody? We got Lavos, roughly around that time frame. We got Lavos and the Cero. And while Lavos may still not be everybody's cup of tea, and trust me, I don't blame you, the Cero is an absolutely insane primary weapon. I absolutely love it. And it's one of the most powerful primary weapons in the game right now. So if the idea of a shotgun with an actual glaive strapped on top of it because design OP sounds uh, fantastic to you then link the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on it trust me the Seto is the kind of weapon that everybody needs to have in their arsenal and that reminds me of something else that happened roughly at the beginning of 2021 you guys remember we were not really happy with the state of melee versus range. Back then, a whole lot of content creators, myself included, cried wolf. Hey, melee too powerful, range is useless. Back then, range weapons were hardly worth using in Steel Path. You needed to know the exact build, use everything, including... Bane mod... <laughs> including faction mods. So that was definitely not an ideal situation. So we cried out, D said, hey, we hear you boys, we're gonna buff this. And they did buff it. Now, I'm still not sure that galvanized mods was the optimal way to buff things, but it did give us something to farm for again, to play more, to grind for. Some players didn't like this. Some players said, hey, this is not an actual buff, you're making me grind some more. But on the other hand, my friends, if the prospect of playing the game isn't fun for you anymore, then maybe you should consider playing something else. I'm not a fan of the way they buffed, but one thing's for sure, range weapons now, thanks to galvanized mods, are a whole lot more powerful. Even though it took them quite a while to clarify certain aspects of these galvanized mods, and it took them quite a while to actually properly fix some of these mods. I'm still not a fan of some of them. For example, when it comes to explosive weapons, we cannot make use of condition over the condition overload type of mod for range weapons. I think for shotguns, it's called... Shotgun savvy and aptitude for rifles and for secondaries uh, Something I forgot so that's a bit of an issue explosive weapons cannot benefit from that the argument was something like oh It would be too powerful really now back then they also nerfed melee a bit and no matter what anybody would tell you The nerf was ever so slight tiny this small very very small So it doesn't really affect the performance of melee weapons all that bad and if you still want the best weapon type in warframe Melee is still the way to go, all you gotta do is press the button, and you win, and you win. And you know what? For some players, that is fine. I'm not one of those players, but hey, who cares? I'm still not a fan of some of the galvanized mods, letting around the whole aptitude and condition overload types. I'm still not a fan of the crit mods. For example, galvanized crossers and galvanized scope. Now, those are critical chance mods for primaries and secondary weapons. They stack up, but unfortunately, if the timer runs out, you don't go to a lower stack you get a full reset. And for a long time, some players said, hey, this must be a bug. It's not a bug, it's as designed. So I'm not a big fan of those types of mods. I will give a thumb up to the Arcanes, however. Now these are flat power for the most part and a little bit of usability. And you know what? They bring more power to primary and secondary weapons. So I'm all for that. That's pretty much it for the range weapon buff and of course throughout the year we updated a whole lot of weapon guides thanks to this again range weapons are a lot more powerful than they used to be we also updated how we get affinity and how fast we can level things obviously we can level things super fast in warframe nowadays this will not really apply to a brand new player coming into Warframe that doesn't have a community behind them or a couple of friends that can actually boost them, but if you want to farm stuff in Warframe and if you want to level uh, things really fast and if you want to add a whole lot of Forma, then definitely it's doable in Warframe. So it's not a super hard and steady grind. Railjack is another thing. The Railjack update. Now, we got Railjack 2.0 and I'll be honest with you guys, I enjoyed Railjack from the get-go. The problem with Railjack is that it was extremely buggy. Most of the bugs, and I do mean most not all, have been fixed, and with Railjack 2.0, I believe that the developer, subjectively speaking, has made Railjack a whole lot more enjoyable. 
Or at the very least, a whole lot more enjoyable than it was before, which was not hard to do considering it was a giant mess. So there's that. Now Railjack is legitimately fun and I do recommend you guys give it a go. It's not as grind intensive, you don't need a million and a half resources of each. And it should be quite doable. Oh, and also, if you're the kind of plat buyer, you can also buy your Railjack with plat nowadays. Then came Tenokan. Ah, Tenokan. And what did we get at Tenokan, my friends? Ha <laughs> ha! At Tenokan, we got the announcement that the new war will be coming this year. But not only that, crossplay, cross save, and Warframe Mobile. Ah, oh, what, dude? Everybody went nuts. Everybody essentially lost it, myself included. Because why the hell not? Honestly, I am. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I'm hoping they can get cross save and cross play done at the first part of the year, so we can all finally, legitimately play together and what do you know it's dawn my friends it's dawn it's the dawn of 2022 and let it be a better year than the one we had now of course tenokan came hyped everything up and we also got gara prime together with the estella prime and the volnus prime and i gotta say guys gara prime i love it she looks amazing i love the buff gara prime is one of the most powerful war in the game period period you guys want to try it you want to go to level cap? You want to build it the right way? Link to the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on Gara Prime. And I also got a separate guide on how to do her stats stick properly so you get the maximum amount of benefit and all whatnot. I love Gara Prime. Now, since we talked about good things, next up, Yareli. Oh boy. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, 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 okay, no, go back, no, 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 okay. Yareli is, I never seen the community react this harsh to a brand new Warframe before. I didn't hate it, I understood what it was, I understood why they made it, but oh my god, the reaction to Yareli was absolutely bloody insane, people hated Yareli. Yareli sucks, Yareli's terrible, Yareli's horrible, why K-Drive, why are you making me, Merolina and all whatnot. And of course, Digital Extremes responded, hey, we got this, alright, we'll fix this and we'll do this and we'll add this dash to the matter. It didn't help, it didn't really help all that much and Yareli currently... I don't know if it's as disliked as Grendel, so I don't say hated. You guys let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think about Yareli? I still don't think it's that bad of a Warframe. But it's definitely not great. Back on one more uh, positive side, we got the Sisters of Perv uh, Parvos update, which was, for me, honestly... The whole tenant weapons and farming sisters is absolutely glorious. But I'm a gun nut. I love modding and testing weapons in Warframe. All of it's honestly, that's what I would do non-stop. If you guys would just watch that, I would just do weapon builds all the time. I just love playing with them and testing them and giving you guys the absolute best build guides I can. And of course, with this update came my baby, the tenant, Arca Blastmore. Ooh! <laughs> Granted, it may not be one of the most powerful primary weapons in the game, but it is sure as hell one of the most enjoyable. And you know what? For Warframe content, you don't really need anything more than this. My friends, link the cards right now for the Tenant Arca Plasma. You know what else came with that update? Not only Tenant weapons, which are glorious, absolutely fantastic, but we also got a couple of Kuva weapons as well. Among them... What is arguably right now the most powerful primary weapon in the game. And I'm talking about the Kuva Za. Guys, that thing has everything. It's got AoE, it's got single target. Okay, granted the usability not, might not be the best thing I have ever seen. But still, one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful primary weapon right now. So if power is what you're after. And a little bit of a pirate flare because at the end of the day you are... You are firing a ship's cannon. You gotta play the Kuvazar. And yeah, you saw that one coming. Link the cards right now. Honestly, I love the Sisters of Parvos update. Granted, it had some bugs. It had some issues. It optimized the old Kuvalich recipe greatly. It's a lot more streamlined. So definitely thumbs up for that. And one more thing. If you want to see the best weapons that that update brought to 2021, look at the cards right now. I had to do it. I had to do it. And that's pretty much it. After the Sisters of Parvos update, the biggest thing that we got was Nidus Prime. And you know what? I still think Nidus Prime looks cool. I think Nidus Prime looks cool. He's nice and he's like Nidus and he does... And he's Nidus. 
He's Nidus. He's, I think he's the only friend that can realistically benefit from all Umbral mods. And that is absolutely insane, man. Thumbs up to that. I love Nidus. I love the weapons he came with. So, definitely. Cool. Moving past that, though, there was a lot of talk this year of raids or some form of endgame being added to Warframe. And obviously... All of us, all of us were hoping that maybe, maybe with the new war, eh? maybe, maybe we get some. We didn't, we didn't get get that with the the new war. And the final chapter, of course, of this little vid, is the new war. For my too humble sense, I enjoy the gameplay. I enjoy the quest. It was a lot of fun. Honestly, I can't wait to play it again and get to explore those style sets a little bit more. And if you guys want to see my thoughts on the new war. Spoiler free, alright? Look at the cards right now. I'm not gonna spoil anything in this video for you guys because I know it's still fresh, so I don't wanna ruin it. You also got my full playthrough of it. I'm gonna give the new war a thumbs up. My problem is that after all is said and done, I still don't have an endgame, you yeah. know? And all I got new is a couple of new bounties, which... <laughs> need more, give more, I need more and more actual playable content, please. So that's my only issue with the new war. But as a questing experience, as the lore, as everything, definitely thumbs up for that and my friends i do believe that kind of wraps up 2021 for warframe now there's still a couple of things which i do want to do i want to do the nataruk build at this point you guys should know it honestly i cannot wait to sink my teeth into that bow but if warframe has taught me anything is that normally they release content not the most balanced not the most bug free so i'm just gonna wait on a few balancing patches and i'll bring you guys the nataruk full and detailed actual build guide but I'm sure it's nice and ready. As for me, your humble content creator, as always, one of us, Malazar, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had a fantastic year with me. I hope you enjoyed the content. Honestly, I give 110% as much and as often as I can. And I'll be honest, I am completely exhausted. I'm gonna take a couple of weeks off starting right now. I'm gonna spend some time with my baby daughter, with my wife, with my family, and enjoy the end and the holidays of 2021. I'll catch you guys in January. I love you guys.